applications or processes on Linux are protected from each other. They have their own virtual memory space, they have their own file descriptors, etc. And ordinarily, they cannot overwrite each other's memory. And uh, this is good in the sense that it, it keeps things safe and protected, but the downside is it makes communication between two processes um, a little bit more work. Um, now, there are many ways to get two processes to communicate with each other, uh, and one of those ways um, we've already looked at is with a process pipe. Um, another is with a FIFO. Now, this is an example where I've written both uh, applications that want to communicate with each other. With the process pipe, it was an application that already existed. Now, we have two. What I've called the server and the client. And if we look at the server and step through the code, all it's going to do is call make FIFO slash temp slash demo six FIFO. Uh, now this creates a special type of file in the temp folder. It's got read and write access for user group another, which is what the 0666 stands for. And uh, if that already exists, you'll just get a minus one back. So if it already exists, that's fine uh, because I've already run this demo before. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and open it with the open command for read. So this is the server and it, it is reading this FIFO, this pipe, um, and waiting for data. So when we try to open it, because nothing's open the other end, it blocks. Now, if we go back to the client application now, which is this project here, and build that one, I can single step through that side as well. So it's quite hard to demonstrate this stuff sometimes. So this is the client, and I've got an array of strings here, and I'm going to send one string at a time. So this is going to open the same FIFO, this is the client, um, this time for write access, or write only. As soon as we do that, that has unblocked the server. So if we switch back to the server now, you'll see that line's unblocked, and we can now proceed. We can put a message, FIFO open. I've got a buffer here, a string buffer. I'm going to write all zeros into it. And the next thing the server's going to do, now both ends of the pipe have been open, one for read, one for write. Um, the server is going to attempt to read data from the pipe, or FIFO. And uh, there's no data in it, so it's going to block again. So it's blocking and waiting on some data to populate the pipe. So we switch back to the client again. All right, and pr proceed down here. So I get the next string. I write the string length as a 8-bit uh, byte. As soon as I do that, you'll find that the server has unblocked and I've managed to read that value. So that value has now, there we are, 7, um, has now come down the pipe and I've read it by the server. The server then tries to ring, sorry, the server then tries to read the pipe again to get the actual string. The data is not there, so it's blocked. Switch back to the client. We write the, the string into the pipe. Switch back to the server. We'll see it's unblocked. And now it prints welcome, the first string, out. And we repeat that process. So if I allow the server to continue to run now, by clicking continue. I can't actually, I can't do that because I've blocked it. Let's uh, let's go back into the client. Let's write some data into the pipe and unblock it. In fact, let's write a couple. Then we go back to the server. I'm now going to let it resume. So we are welcome to the, has made it down the pipe. Back to the uh, client and we continue writing the length of the string, followed by the string itself. You'll briefly see that appearing here in the terminal. So welcome to the module. This is a talk module at Plymouth University. This will now stop. And uh, when I close this, the client can then just finish up. 
I switch back to the server, that will have finished as well. So what you've got are synchronized communication there between a client and a server using a memory resident pipe. Um, that memory resident pipe is represented by a file node, but of course it's not a file in the traditional sense of a file on a hard disk.